too hot to be wearing this. Things degrade here. Inevitably. Everything condenses down. And the level at which we hold things in reverence, like certain things over other certain things that appear, that's the determinant. That is the thing that determines whether a particular dominates our landscape the amount of reverence or import that we hold for it. So for instance, I just finished this book, What Dreams May Come. Now that whole vast experience, which is what a book is, it's a vast experience for you while you're reading it. When you're done, unless you consider the book to be uh, biblical in nature and of vast import, then what was this and encompassing your entire experience, for the most part, shrinks down into this little blip. It's a blip. And it's necessary for it to be that way. Because we can't experience everything at once in linear time. So now it's this little itty bitty dot. It's this uh, signpost in my mind that's called what dreams may come. And that signpost can lead me back to the book if I want to investigate into it further or if I want to uh, perhaps reread it, uh, look into one particular aspect of the book that has relevance to the current situation or for whatever other myriad of reasons that I might want to look back into this blip, right? As soon as you have had an experience, it condenses down in your present moment as what we know as memory. And it's really just a signpost. All of that goes into the, the subconscious or the unconscious or the astral realms or the the memory, wherever the memory resides, in whole, in a place where uh, it's kept off of our conscious grasp for the most part, so we don't get overwhelmed, because if we were having access to all of these things in the present moment, then the present moment would become unbearable in a very short time, or immediately. So there's a reasoning behind why as soon as we experience anything a set of sensory perceptions they condense down into a neural blip they become a thought a thought signpost and the same goes for all of it 
as long as you were being neutral in your approach. So something like Christianity, even. If you're holding it in reverence and in the utmost of uh, import to your life and everyone else's life, then the blip is no longer a blip. It has encompassed out and it's covering all of your... It's uh, coloring all of your current experience. If you hold it in reverence and if you hold it as uh, an utmost important thing. But if you don't, then it does the same thing as what dreams may come and it condenses down and it's a blip. And you have this blip that's called Christianity and then whenever you see somebody talking about Christianity, then you're like, okay, go to the blip that's labeled Christianity and open it up. And then you have uh, access to all of your own personal information regarding that subject. And the same goes with all of the concepts. So say you have the concept of universe. So you hold that concept in reverence. Well, then that goes out and that's your, <laughs> that's your universe now. That's your all. Because you, you hold it in reverence. You hold it as having more import than all of the other uh, things that are dotting your mental landscape. And you can do this with any word. And the ones that we hold reverent are still words. The word God, the word knowledge, the word reverence, the word importance. They're all signposts that are essentially like a gateway. Mentally, you can you know of that signpost and you can go open that door and reference whatever is happening in your present moment and inform whatever is happening in your present moment. And you have the ability to let all of these blips or dots that are making up your current present experience in form of mental capacity you have the ability to make those either a subject or a, a dot of reverence or simply similar to all the other dots. It's a signpost and it's an entryway to uh, another realm, another thought realm that is composed of a whole bunch of crap or a whole bunch of stuff. And you can go in there and investigate. You can go in, you don't have to even just investigate, you can even apply it in a physical sense, like open up the door that's called religion. Well, what is religion composed of? Well, it's composed of churches and then people in there holding all sorts of beliefs. And, well, okay, well, if I want to go investigate that, I can go to a church and talk to anybody that's in there and investigate in that way. Or I can go online, which holds all the thought forms of the people who have ever investigated religion in any way, shape, or form. So it's really just signposts that are holding uh, the doorway to previous experiences that we've had that we can either enter or not enter. Just a thought.